Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. I'm Joey, you're watching Vegas D-Tech. Got another good one for you guys today. Doing another uh, ground zero situation report. We're back at the marina. We're gonna run down here and take a look at the, uh, the boat ramps here. It's completely empty right now. But you see all these cars out here. These are definitely people that are out at the boat, out on their boats right now. Now the, uh, the current reports here, I'll put it up on the screen. It still shows that the, uh, this is the only available boat ramp that's open right now, Hemingway Harbor. And all the other boat ramps out there are closed. And we are still limited to a 24 foot boat. And uh, it has to be a shallow hull. So let's go down here and take a look and see how things look. Then we'll go over this uh, berm over here and take a look at my cove. Uh, take a look at some of the markers that I had situated there a couple of weeks ago and see if we can see anything different in the timeline since uh, we last visited there. At least the construction trucks, they seem to be stopped for today. But then again, it's Sunday. Get out here on a Monday, these things should be just pushing dirt all over the place. You can just see all the dirt around here that they're still pushing around. Let's take a look at this. And guys, this is, this is exactly what has to happen in order to keep this ramp open here in a continuous push to keep on keeping this last boat ramp open we have to have big. Uh, we have to have big construction vehicles like this here pushing this dirt, and you can see the amount of work that they've done so far right here. Huh. Now take a look at this, guys. You can see all of these. Uh, you can see all of these bathrooms here. They're just lined up, bathroom, 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 bathroom. They actually got signs in front of the bathroom, as like in this one right over here. Let, let me just take you over here and show you. Something. In front of these bathrooms, there's an actual sign and it shows you the amount of water loss each year. They're not even moving the bathrooms. They're just using it as a marker to show you guys. So check this out. So we're here, Lake Mead Waterline 2021, boom. From right here all the way down there, this is what has transpired and, and lost in that amount, amount of time. So check this out. So we're gonna go from here and we're just going to walk over here. And we just moved back in time to 2018. 2018 water line is here. 2021 water line is there. And it is moving rapidly, man. So let's just get down to these boat ramps down here and see what's going on. See what these guys are up to. All right, we're about to uh, step onto the boat ramp here. We got somebody backing in right now. About to come pick up this boat. This wasn't here last week. As you can see here, these are the metal grates that they use for the trucks to back in. And this is the reason why the boats can't be very deep hold. It's gotta be a, a shallow V hole. And you can see the size of the boats here. It's 20, 24 feet or less. Very uh, shallow hole. Very shallow water line here, guys. Very shallow. Wow, dude. This water is literally probably five or six feet deep at, at, at most right here at this point. And this is the end of the plates. I'm telling you guys, 
I'm about six foot tall in this water right here where these boats are being launched right now. You're looking at no more than about five, I'm saying five feet, maybe not even five feet, maybe, maybe four feet. That's how shallow this water is right here. Four feet, man. This is gonna have to keep coming out. Three feet. One and a half feet. One feet. Not very much water here, guys, at all, at this ramp. Hey guys, have a look at these here. Look at the, look at the terrace steps here, the gradients. Look at those stripes. You see that? All of those steps right here, man is just foot and foot and foot and foot and foot of water recession going all the way out here all right guys one of the main one of the main uh markers that i get when i come out here to tell you exactly how much we've actually lost in water is i take a look at these footprints right now and as i'm walking across this dirt even though it looks like you could just walk clear out to the end you can't you could just see here by the depth the depth of these footprints right here that there's the moisture content in this area right here is relatively fresh so this is water right here where this barricade right here is i can almost guarantee you that this barricade right here this whole this whole mark as we're going to look right here this was all ex new new exposed water this is new exposed dirt from the water right here based on these deep footprints that i'm getting right here this is all brand new footprints guys it's very unstable ground right here you start stepping into that if there's no rocky foundation here you're going to sink down and i had that happen to me when i went over here to go take a look at the boats the ground looked like it was stable i just made one step and it was just like quicksand i just sunk down into it because the water is being pulled right out of here very quickly so like i said from this brick right here on forward I believe that from there to there, that's the water that we've lost here in just a couple of weeks. All these cables I didn't see out here either. And these are mooring cables. And look, you could just see, you could just see a ton of these mooring cables popping up out of the ground out here. They're scattered all through here. All this stuff right here is mooring cables. All right, man, so let's get over to this cove and see how this thing looks since the last time we were out here. All right, guys. So we're back at this mooring block here that was in my last video. Here we go. Here's the dampness. Here was the little teeny circle, the circle holes that I was showing you about. Remember when I was showing you the, the water bubbles and pockets were coming out of those little teeny holes and I was asking you guys, what are these holes? There they are right there. This guy was the mark. This guy was the mark. The water was here last. Let's go down here and take a look. And here's that barrel. Yeah, and I was trying to I was trying to say we were going to use these tires right here. This bar this barrel and those tires out there. I don't know how stable the ground is. Let me take a look. Stay right here. I'm going to uh, run out here and take a look and see how stable this ground is. Dude, this ground, whoa, whoa, I'm sinking, I'm sinking, I'm sinking, I'm sinking. Nah, dude. I can't even walk out there, guys. I'm actually sinking. So this is fresh right here, guys. This is all fresh. There's still a good degree of moisture right here in this ground. And I was trying to use the barrel from where you're at straight down through these tires right here. This right here, from here all the way out to right here, this right here is water loss. 
I can't even I can't even step any further right here guys this right here if you step in this you're gonna sink my whole foot just went down into the mud so yeah let me let me try let me try to get out here again hold on I'm sinking. I tell you how crazy it is. There's actual footprints from uh, coyotes. Just the, weight, just the weight of a coyote is pressing down in the mud. I can see that right through there. I can't get out there, guys. So I know that that's relatively fresh water loss right there. I mean, take a look at this. See this right here? These little pockets here, that's coyote footprints. And a coyote doesn't weigh very much, man. And uh, when I try to step on it, look at this. Look at that. Look at how my foot is sinking into the back. Look. Nah, that's way too soft. This is all fresh, man. This is all fresh. Can't get very close to this here. Yeah, the bubbles that we were looking at, it looked like this was the guy that was doing the bubbles right here in my last video, this one. And you see how dark this is right here? This is actual still wetness of water going out. I dare not come too close to this right here. Now, if we get along these rocks here, we might have some, some kind of a base to work with. All these algae blooms, man. Yeah, it looks like the vegetation that was underwater is getting so close that the sunlight now is able to actually hit it and make it grow in the water. Kind of like a cranberry forest. Yeah, man, so this is gonna be like, this is gonna actually be my spot to mark how, how soon can this thing pond out? This is the one cove that's right next to the uh, actual uh, boat launch. So we're gonna keep our, we're gonna keep our eyes from here. I would say right here, if you just take a look at the brown from where the water is right now all the way to where the brown is over there, that is the loss that we have in the time that we've been out here last. That's it right there. That's a good 30, 40 feet, 40 foot of loss right there in distance. So let's just look at that little red bucket right there. About 15 feet in front of it where the brown starts, that is the receding from there to here there's your marker we're going to keep an eye on that bucket nobody comes out and moves it and we're going to take a look and see how long it takes for this thing to move from here and see where we are at this point i don't know if you guys can notice from here with this camera can you see the cuts on this uh, terrace here how you could just see the steps I had an individual tell me that he's able to actually measure the distance between the steps and he can actually give you to the T the exact amount of time between each step. He knows exactly when and how much water is being released just, be just based on those gradients in those steps. Boy, it is a hot one, man. Man, like 113 in this hot sun, dude. See up here, you can get near the water because you got this rocks um, as foundation to help support you. But if it's just straight sand, forget about it. You can't get that close. Uh-oh, I see some more carnage.
crazy. See this right here? This is actually, this is an actual restroom. Not one of those porta potties, but an actual restroom that was built because the water was so close to the restroom. But if you take a look, man, that's how far you'd have to walk now to get to the bathroom that used to be right here when the water used to be like literally right here. And now you gotta go clear the hill down there. This is literally where the rubber leaves the road. Just got here to the uh, Lake Mead Marina. Let's go ahead and go in here and actually talk to these guys and see if we can get any new information as to any new updates, anything critical uh, that's transpired since the last time we were out here just a couple of weeks ago. Guys, I literally walked all the way into the marina and had to turn back around and come back to the Toyota because GoPro number one just completely quit working on me, man. Almost caught on fire. Yeah, it just quit, no good. I don't know if it's burnt out or not, man. Luckily, I decided to make sure. I knew it was gonna be hot. And I know that these GoPros do not do very well in temperatures like 110 to 115. They're just not gonna last out here. They just overheat so quickly. So I'm gonna get in here and try to um, talk to some of these people at the marina, try to get some information, because I don't know what's gonna pass out first, the camera or me. Well, for at least the first camera, I lasted the first camera. I hope I can last the second camera. So uh, let's get up in here, man, and see what these guys can tell us, huh? Our man, at the Lake Mead Marina, doing but this stuff that I'm seeing this looks like pure doo-doo floating around in this water like straight up poop man I tell you what you couldn't pay me any amount of money to climb in this thing with all this damn poop floating around here nasty more of that poop action man what is this Tell me Las Vegas ain't throwing their poop into the water like this untreated? No way. Guys, I want you to come out here with me to the end of this end dock right here. And I'm gonna show you just how close this boat dock is to the actual shoreline here. Just have a look at how look just have a look at how close that is there. So here we are at the end of the boat dock. And look at that water right there. Look at how close we are. Now let's take a look at this guy right here. That is a big old double-decker houseboat, man. This is the end ramp. And that's the shoreline. I have never seen a marina come this close to the shoreline right here, guys. National Park Service boat. Put out some of them fires with this here. And uh, we're over here at the Harbor House Cafe and this is gonna be the actual uh, snack bar where I need this Gatorade. And they have again here the forecast and the water level posted. 
17th. 104.133, 82 degrees with isolated showers and thunderstorms after four. I ain't seen no water in Las Vegas. Hopefully they do get something out here. And so I just went out here to the boat harbor and I got to speak to a whole bunch of really cool cats out here in the boat harbor. Corey was a big help to me. He basically gave me the info on the scoop as to uh, what's going on here. And he's saying that they've had to move at least six times here, six to almost eight times. They've already had to move this marina in the past six months. I was like, my God, it's been eight, eight times in six months. He says they've had to move. And he says they're already overdue for another move. And each time they're pushing out 100 feet at a time. And he gave me the breakdown of how it was done. And I never even understood how they actually do this. And he basically told me that these cables like they have like this right here, they have mooring blocks all along the side of the shoreline. And they actually have these cables hooked up to those blocks. And they actually pull the marina out towards those blocks and they actually have dozers that have arms that come out and actually push the entire marina out as like one big barge as they've got cables that push them out out towards the actual shoreline i never i never knew how they actually did it but he says that yeah literally they're doing this thing every few months out here and then i was asking him about all this dirt why do they have all this dirt out here what are these what is the main reason for all these dozers and he says that right now they just need that dirt because they're this is this being the only uh, open boat ramp. They have to liter literally uh, use this dirt to continually push this ramp out further and further. And he says that there was a situation where people didn't want to wait in line to launch their boats because, as you've seen already, it's almost a four-hour wait on certain days to launch your boat and another four to pick them up. And a lot of these boat guys were actually just trying to just circumvent that and launch their boat from anywhere. They wanted to, to go out there and just pick a spot and back up and push their, push their boat into the water. And finally, the uh, park services decided to put these barricades up here and berms, putting up these berms and barricades so that these guys can't actually go out there and try to launch their boat out that way. They want them to use the launch and that's it. So uh, very interesting, man. These guys are really cool. Now that I got a squad of these guys out here, I'm gonna be able to get out here and get the actual 411 from the reel. And I know these guys here know what's up because uh, this is their job, you know? And I, I gotta give thanks to the whole crew out here at the uh, Las Vegas Boat Harbor Marina. And uh, especially to Corey, he was a big help with giving me the information that we need. So anyways, guys, man, there really ain't much going on out here this Sunday. It seems really quiet. As you can see here, the boat launch here is pretty much empty. But uh, we got only five feet of uh, actual water at the very end, man. So it's definitely getting serious. And um, there's all kinds of talk, you know, especially with the guys who are telling me about this island right out here. He says there, he thinks there's like a 95 foot push and they can't get any closer to that. And somebody was saying that they might actually think about attaching to the actual island and making that island a part of the marina. That would be really crazy to think. You know, maybe get a walkway that goes from here. Once it dries up, you'll actually walk from here. There'll be no more water. And you'll actually be able to park really close to that over there and then have that island be a part of the marina. And then the marina will actually attach to the island. He says they actually need that island because it acts like a barrier from the wind so that you don't get all this wind. It actually protects these boats here. So uh, maybe that'll be the situation. Maybe they'll push out and push up next to that island there and actually lock up to it. And that's where they'll stay. But uh, only time will tell. What these guys are telling me, dude, it's a constant situation on a daily. Things are happening out here. So yeah, man, it's going to be interesting. We're going to keep coming out here, man, talking to these guys, finding out what's going on. I think I got a good connection now where uh, if we need the 411. We're not going to have to read the news, listen to the news. We're just going to come out here and talk with these guys here get the actual information that we need so anyways guys it is hot as heck i need to get the hell out of here i'm talking about i think i already drank three of these gatorades and i already burnt up one gopro camera so i'm gonna go ahead and uh close this one up guys thank you so much again for uh tuning into another episode man um 
Hope you guys are doing well. If you haven't done so already, uh, please give me a like, subscribe, share this information with your family, friends. And guys, I'll catch you guys back here in the next video. You guys be well. Take it easy. Bye now.